Welcome uh, and thank you all for joining us for our first live Wellness Wednesday event of 2021. Uh, we hope all your years are off to a fantastic start. Uh, we are very fortunate to have our favorite yogi, author, and meditation teacher, Mr. Jerry Givens, back here with us again today. Now, you may recognize him from our previous chair yoga or meditation events, uh, but today, Jerry will be leading us through some essential breathing techniques for balance, healing, and peace. Uh, and since those techniques that we'll go through today are based on one of Jerry's recent books, Essential Pranayama, uh, we are going to be raffling off his book at the end of the session today to two lucky winners. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned. Uh, and before I hand it over to Jerry, just a few quick reminders. Uh, if you could please be courteous and keep yourselves on mute while Jerry is presenting. Uh, we will be opening up at the end for questions and we'll also be recording the session uh, to host on our YouTube channel. So you can come back to it as many times as you like. Uh, so with that, we hope you enjoy the program and we'll let Jerry take it away. Thank you, Brooke. And thank you, Aptus and everybody for having me back. It's always great to kind of have a, a repeat, <laughs> repeat with y'all. So um, again, I'm Jerry Givens. And uh, last year, actually in late 2019, so long before the pandemic, I wrote a book called Essential Pranayama and it came out like a, a month into the pandemic. And I'm really excited to be able to present on it now. Um, I was planning on doing all of that in person. And so just to kind of let you know how the session will go for us today, the first, there we go, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> the first 15 minutes will be quite didactic. I have a slideshow to show you with some, uh, just some tips and tricks and some information about breathing itself. And then we're gonna spend the last 30 minutes exploring breathing techniques and it'll make a lot of sense once I kind of tell you the energetic effects of breathing and how we can do that in different ways. And my goal is for you to have some tools at the end of the day or at the end of the presentation, I should say, to bring into your own life, to know how to use your breath in a way that feels constructive, that feels supportive for you, or maybe even healing for you, if that's something that you need. All right. So I'm going to present my screen now. There we go. All right, good, good. So mindful breathing. I already introduced myself, I'm Jerry Gibbons. <laughs> I, I teach yoga and meditation. I've been doing that for about 12, 13 years. Um, I specialize in corporate wellness. I am a life coach and then I'm also a writer as we've already mentioned. So Brooke mentioned the word pranayama which might be a word that many of you have not heard before it's okay to just kind of equate that with like breathing techniques or breath work. And the word pranayama comes from the yoga tradition. And it basically means breath control, a way to use the breath to create certain effects in the body to <laughs> create certain outcomes that you want. And for the intents of this practice that we'll do today. It's a series of techniques to help regulate the nervous system. And so depending on what kind of breathing technique you do, you could energize your body, you could calm your body, or you could create a system of balance inside of your body. And they range from small practices, things you can do in the matter of a few seconds, to practices that take a lot of time and practice to master. Some of the techniques that I have in the book are 25 minutes long. <laughs> and some of them are three minutes long. So depending on your level of practice and depending on how much time you have, there's so much there for you. And you can even blend them together, which is what we're gonna do today a bit. And so pranayama, many traditions actually use breathing techniques. Um, Buddhism has breathing techniques, Hinduism, of course, yoga. Pranayama as a name, and end of practice, I should say, comes from the yoga tradition, as I mentioned, and it's the fourth limb of Raja Yoga, um, which is a pathway to enlightenment. So some of you who have taken yoga classes um, might have heard of like the eight limb path, which, you know, yoga postures are a part of that, meditation is a part of that, pranayama is also a part of that. And it can be a preparatory step classically for deeper states of meditation. And the good news is you can use it for that, or you can just use it as a practice itself, just breathing in certain ways. Good, so there's some great benefits to breath work or pranayama, and you can tone the autonomic nervous system. So you can actually make it so that you feel a bit more resilient, um, especially if you're practicing consistently. 
You can manage and reduce stress and anxiety. You can regulate the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, clears the mind, can help regulate your digestive system, clear the respiratory system, and it can even help with some cardiovascular issues. Um, especially, you know, if you think about like sleep apnea, where you stop breathing while you sleep, that can cause your heart to be enlarged. Um, but if you practice pranayama consistently and you train your body a bit more to breathe more efficiently, you know, kind of theoretically, you could actually stop having sleep apnea through that. Now, the disclaimer here, of course, is that this is not supposed to be a prescription for you. <laughs> it's not supposed to be something you do in lieu of anything your doctor wants you to do, but it can support your healing journey so, so much. So, um, and it can also be used preventatively. Definitely can be used preventatively. But just know that this, I'm not telling you like throw out your medication or your doctor or your doctor told you to do. Um, definitely keep, keep, uh, keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. So there are three energetic effects to breath work and we're gonna experience all three of them today in um, the practice session of this. The first is the calming effect. And so some practices of pranayama can reduce excess frenetic energy. So if you're feeling restless, if you're feeling anxious, these help to calm the nervous system down. And these consist of slower breathing rhythms, breathing to the lower part of your body, the belly, um, focusing on the exhale. Sometimes you do extended exhalations where the exhale is longer, or longer than the inhale, and that can have this calming effect. Um, and these techniques are great to do you know, in the evening as you're preparing to sleep, if you are experiencing insomnia or overstimulation, like if you're just having one of those days where like a lot's coming at you and you're starting to feel that anxiety kind of building in your system, you could close your eyes and just do a deep belly breath and it kind of brings you back a little bit. It's great to do after significant trauma. If you've had a, you know, a serious episode of something, great time to practice these calming techniques. And then just general restlessness in your body and mind. If you're just not feeling you know, comfortable in your body it's, or, or in, even in your head, these can be great techniques for that. So again, we'll experience these in just a little bit, but the second energetic effect is the energizing effect. So it's kind of the other side of the coin to the calming effect. So sometimes we're feeling lethargic or depressed or just we don't really have any energy. These are the practices you do then. And so they build energy, they increase vitality. You kind of think about it as making yourself a bit more extroverted might be a great practice to do when you have to give a presentation to kind of bring yourself awake and bring yourself kind of back into the world. And so, and it's not energizing in a dysregulating way. You know, you're not you know, drinking a bunch of caffeine and just feeling kind of wired to the point of restlessness and friedness. This has a balanced sense to it, if you will. And so the way that we do this is quicker and more energetic breathing rhythms, um, full breaths to the chest and the rib cage. Um, and we focus on the inhalation versus the exhalation. So that helps to create more energy in the body. So more excitement of the nervous system. And again, um, you can do this while you're feeling lethargic. Maybe if your mind feels foggy, like you're just not able to concentrate or there's a lot of confusion. If you're low energy, if you're depressed, and earlier in the day, these are great practice to do when you need to wake up. So I'm not saying replace your cup of coffee with this just yet, it might take some practice, but um, over time, there are some of these practices that do just kind of really just wake you right up. And again, we'll practice some of these today. The third energetic effect is kind of a blend of the first two. And uh, so it's balancing, it's balancing. And so, we can do this by evening out the length of the inhale and exhale versus focusing on just one. Um, it can include holding the breath at certain points intentionally. And um, yeah, this is a great one to do if you're just not sure what to do. You know, sometimes we kind of go inward and we're not really sure like how we're feeling. We kind of feel restless, but also tired <laughs> at the same time. And so this is like your foolproof, no matter what state you're in, this one will help you out. Okay. And there are many reasons why you'd want to do this versus the other ones. But the good news with these energetic effects or with these breathing techniques, even if you were to pick the wrong one to do, you'd still get a good benefit out of it. So for those perfectionist parts of our personalities, <laughs> just let you know, like, 
sometimes you know you're tired and you know you need energizing, but if you're not sure, none of these will hurt you. They just won't. So just know that you, you can't do it wrong <laughs> in that case. Go ahead. So before we jump into the practice, I want to talk about ways to breathe because there is a mechanical aspect to breathing and there is a right way to breathe or right ways to breathe and there are wrong ways to breathe. And let's just go through those. Um, so there are four. The first one and probably the most regulating of all of them is diaphragmatic breathing or sometimes called the belly breath. And so this helps to soften the muscles around your abdomen, allowing for the movement of the breath to relax into the region of, of the abdomen or the belly. Um, this way of breathing can be done in a formal pranayama practice like we'll do today, or it can be a spontaneous way of breathing when the mind and body are relaxed. So if you know about the nervous system, it helps to induce the parasympathetic or relaxed state. And so we'll do this one more for the calming energetic effect, but this again could be, could be done intentionally or it might just be a spontaneous state that you find your breath in. It's probably the most restful state for, the, for breathing that you can possibly do. The other, the next one is thoracic breathing. And this has to, to this signifies the region of the spine that you're breathing to. And so this is, uh, the thoracic spine is about mid chest on the spine to just below the neck. So that region of the body we're breathing into mostly. So it might sometimes also be called chest breathing. And so when the diaphragm doesn't descend downward into the abdomen, um, which is what happens in diaphragmatic breath, it just widens outward and it allows the breath to kind of stay in the lungs and the rib cage to kind of move out instead of moving, uh, the, sorry, the diaphragm moving down. And there are both pros and cons to breathing this way. Um, it's definitely not a, a bad way to breathe, but it's not one that you want to do all the time. So when done intentionally and with a pranayama technique, it can increase vitality and it can be stimulating to the nervous system. But when it's done unconsciously, your breath capacity drops. You can't take deep breaths and shallow breathing can have negative long-term effects on your health, especially when you think about like cardiovascular diseases. And I mentioned sleep apnea before. Um, it can definitely happen with this as well. Um, yeah, and so this is why you don't want this to be your default breathing pattern. So when done correctly and when done intentionally, thoracic breathing is great. And it's great to use to induce that energetic, um, energetic effect, <laughs> that increase of energy energetic effect. Um, but when done unintentionally can have some, some negative side effects. The next one is clavicular breathing, and that is pointing directly to the clavicles or the collarbones as we normally call them. And so this is the most shallow version of breathing and we hardly ever want to breathe this way. Um, so we're kind of going from best way to breathe to least uh, good way to breathe. So when you inhale, neither the belly nor the rib cage expands. And so the breath draws up into the upper portion of your lungs. And we don't always think about the lungs being behind the collarbones, but the lungs actually do go all the way up here. And you might even feel your collarbones lift as you do, the, as you do so. Um, and though it's a part of a full deep breath, it's not something you want to rely on all the time. Now what happens when we get anxious or when we get stressed and we start taking shallow breaths and our rib cage doesn't move and our diaphragm doesn't really move, we start to breathe up here quite a bit and you can't take a deep breath up there. And it's kind of like, it creates the cycle. So you're anxious, so you breathe shallowly, but the shallow breath doesn't give you a lot of oxygen. So your nervous system starts to feel even more anxious. So it kind of just repeats, repeats, repeats. Good thing we have breathing techniques to help bring that breath back down into the other portions of the lungs as well. Um, we don't want to put stress on the body. This puts stress on the heart and brain. Less oxygen is absorbed. And you know, you might even find if you're feeling like sluggish or tired that you're breathing quite shallowly. And that might be shallow to the thoracic region, and it might be shallow to the clavicular region. Now, believe it or not, there's one that's even worse than this. <laughs> and that is paradoxical breathing, lastly and much, much leastly. And this is an interesting phenomenon that happens unconsciously and it has severe negative long-term effects. So when you inhale, the diaphragm draws upward and instead of expand the, the body expanding as you inhale, the chest actually collapses. It doesn't collapse because you're breathing anywhere else, but it's kind of like this false firing of muscles in your respiratory system and um, 
it usually happens because of trauma or some kind of injury to the chest wall and it disrupts the nerves and the diaphragm and it creates weak respiratory muscles. So some signs that you're breathing unconsciously in this way are shortness of breath, hypersomnia, so the opposite of insomnia, you're breathing, you're, eating, you're um, sleeping too much, exhaustion, poor sleep quality, abnormal, abnormal quick breathing, and reduced physical performance. Now, um, where the other ones where you're probably like watching and listening to me, you're like trying to like feel in your body, don't, don't try this one at home. <laughs> this one happens unconsciously and when it does happen, it's, it's a signal that something needs to be fixed. Um, and luckily, the practices we'll do today are quick things that you can do to help just fix that. Um, but if you've noticed yourself doing it consistently, you'll want to take a deeper look at the reason why behind it. So before we get into the practice itself, the question you might have is like, how often do I practice this? as often as you need to. Some people have it as a daily practice, usually with their yoga practice or with a meditation practice. You can definitely practice this on your own, like whenever you're thinking about it. The calming effect ones are great to do in the middle of the day when you just notice that you're just having a moment. <laughs> um, definitely when I'm feeling anxious, I go straight for the belly breath um, and that just helps bring me back. Same with if I'm feeling sluggish, you know, we get to that 2 p.m. point, we're like, how am I gonna make it to five o'clock? Some of these breathing techniques are great to do for that. As I mentioned before, some of these are great to prepare you for something. So if you're giving a presentation or a talk, you might wanna do a pranayama right beforehand that is kind of extroverting or exciting. If you're about to have a meeting and you're really, really nervous about it and you find your heart race quickening, it might be good to do a calming practice for that. So daily is good, consistency is key here, um, but also as you need to. There are plenty of resources out there. Of course, you could pick up my book, <laughs> Essential Pranayama. It's available uh, pretty much at any online book retailer, but an easy one to get to is searching my name and the book title on Amazon. A lot of pranayama is done in yoga classes or in meditation classes. Um, you can get somebody to help you one-on-one -on -one if you really want to work on it. And then um, I also have a couple of recorded practices on the app Insight Timer, which is completely free, um, but other teachers do it too. So if you don't like mine, you can <laughs> find somebody else who, who teaches well. So there are many resources you have out there. You can practice this on your own, of course. You could rewatch this video if you wanted to, but um, there's so much out there. I mean, the book itself has 60 techniques in it. So just know that there's plenty you can do. All right. Um, I'm gonna save Q&A for the end today, if that's okay. I wanna really jump into the practice portion of this, but we will have time at the end. Sound good? All right. So the calming effect, we're gonna practice two and we're gonna link them together. So we're gonna start with the first one and then we're gonna build onto it. So the first one is just honestly witnessing your breath. It's called the natural breath. And so there are certain checkpoints that will hit along the way. We'll be aware of the breath at the opening of the nostrils, We'll be aware of the sensation of the breath in the nasal passages, the sensation of the throat, and the sensation of the lungs filling and emptying. And we're just going to follow that journey in and follow that journey out. After really establishing that awareness, then we'll bring the breath down into the abdomen, which is diaphragmatic breathing. And this is a great way to just calm the nervous system really, really quickly and efficiently. And this is a great one to do if you find yourself having restless states like insomnia. Okay. So let's do this together. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because you can see me. There we go. <laughs> so just sit comfortably wherever you're at. For the calming effect ones, generally speaking, you could even do them laying down if you wanted to. So if you, if you really need a break right now, you can go lay down on the couch or on, the, on your bed or the floor or something. But if you are sitting, sit comfortably and allow your eyes to close if that's okay for you. And we'll start by establishing the natural breath. Taking a deep breath in and out. And become aware of the light flutter of the breath at the opening of your nostrils. You might even feel some sensation of the breath on your upper lip.
And then notice the sensation of the breath in your nasal passages. Often it feels cooler on inhale and warmer on exhale. You might even notice that one nostril is partially blocked and that's okay for now. And then notice the sensation of your breath at the back of your throat. And again, that sensation might be different on inhale than on exhale. And then there's the feeling of the lungs filling, inflating as you inhale and emptying as you exhale. And then we'll link all of these awarenesses together in sequence. So the next inhale, feel the breath of the opening of the nostrils, feel it move through the nasal passages, past the throat, and then feel the lungs fill. And as you exhale, feel the lungs deflate, the breath moving past the throat, through the nostrils and out. And inhale, aware of that journey of the breath in through the nostrils, past your throat, into the lungs. Exhale, out of the lungs, past the throat, through the nostrils and out again. And just for a few more rounds, we'll continue to follow that flow kind of eat, hitting each checkpoint along the way. The opening of the nostrils, the nasal passages, the throat, the lungs. Then exhale the lungs, the throat, the nasal passages, and the opening of the nostrils. You might find that your mind wanders and you lose awareness of the practice and that's pretty normal. Just when you're aware that you've wandered in your mind, just come back to it. The opening of the nostrils, the nasal passages, the throat, the lungs, and exhale the lungs, the throat, the nasal passages, and the opening of the nostrils. And then allow the, there just to be a general awareness of the natural breath. So you're just kind of lightly aware that you're breathing, essentially. And then become aware of the movement of your abdomen. The inhale, the belly expands. On the exhale, it relaxes. Now other parts of the body might be moving still and that's fine, but just notice the abdomen. Inhale, expand, exhale, relax. And you might notice that there's some tension in or around the abdomen, some gripping or holding, and just see if you can consciously relax that effort. Soften the belly allowing the breath to more easily or naturally pull down into that region of your body. And if you're able to, try to completely relax the movement of the rib cage and chest, allowing the movement of your body to be isolated to the abdomen. Just do your best. It's okay if you can't achieve that perfectly, but do continue to, as much as possible, allow the breath to manifest in the abdomen.
And we'll continue for just another round or two, breathing to the abdomen. Again, your mind might wander, that's fine. Just bring it back. All right, and then go ahead and take a deeper, fuller breath. And allow your eyes to open, just slowly bringing yourself back from that one especially in the calming ones, it kind of takes us away from the world and that's a good thing. It's a bit of a respite or a bit of a break. You might just notice right now, how do you feel? You know, the idea behind it, of course, was a calming effect. See if, that, see if that's true for you or not. It's not always for everybody, but you may feel some version of calming. It might feel tired. <laughs> it might feel you know, kind of lethargic. You might feel kind of your body slumping a little bit. And that just means that your nervous system really needs a break. So it's okay if that is the truth for you. But you also just might feel a little bit more refreshed from that as well. So that is the calming effect. So let's look at the next effect. Yeah, Donna says she feels tired and calm. That's totally normal, totally normal. Good. So now we get to feel the other side of the coin from that. I hate to say opposite. It's just the other side of the coin for that. So there are two techniques that we'll practice in sequence with this one as well. The first one is called expanded breathing, which is gonna be basically expanded thoracic breathing. So we'll feel the lungs fill to capacity or near capacity on inhale, and then to near completion on exhale. And so it's just, it's a bigger, broader, deeper breath. A good thing to note here is that we don't want to strain at all. Sometimes we want to inhale and just <gasps> feel the breath. Oh, we don't want to do that. <laughs> We're not trying to do that right now. We just want to feel the breath expand as much as we can um, without straining. And then uh, the breath exhale as much as you can without straining. And what you may find over time is that you've actually stretched out the um, intercostal muscles between the rib cage and you can actually take a deeper breath. So the the point of expansion might move, but there won't be any strain behind it. And this is great to do if you're noticing shallow breathing patterns, or again, if, in this case, if you need a bit more energy. Now, adding on to that is after a while, we're gonna add uh, just a short intentional hold of the breath after inhalation. Um, we're not gonna hold the breath after exhalation for this technique. And the caveat here is that if holding the breath makes you feel anxious, don't do it. Just continue with the expanded breathing. Sometimes holding the breath can actually cause the nervous system to get kind of like fearful. So just know that in your system, there's nothing to achieve here. It's okay if you can't do the second part of the practice, just keep doing the first part because that just means it's where you're at and you're still getting great benefits from it. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice this one. So sitting comfortably again. Allow yourself to relax. There is still that relaxedness to it. Eyes closed if that's comfortable and become aware of the movement of your rib cage. So we're not forcing the breath yet. We're just aware of the breath. Feeling the rib cage widen as you inhale, feeling the rib cage narrow as you exhale. Always starting with just awareness of the breath, no matter what energetic effect we're heading for, no matter what technique we're practicing, we always start with just breath awareness. So aware of the movement of the rib cage with your next inhale, allow the ribs to expand to again, near capacity. We're not straining at all, but it is a deep breath. And then exhale to near completion. Again, we're not straining, but you do wanna empty the breath 
or the body of breath as much as you can. And then inhale, slowly expand. It's not a sharp inhale, it's a slow, deep inhale. And a slow, deep exhale. Now I haven't mentioned this yet, and I meant to, but we're breathing through the nostrils as much as possible. Inhale slowly. Exhale slowly. And taking your time with the breath. Lungs expanding on inhale, and emptying the body of breath on exhale. And already you might start to feel that point of expansion starting to move out a bit. You can actually take even deeper breaths after a while as your body gets used to taking these deeper, more intentional breaths. And again, it's still that slow transition between fullness and emptiness. So you have the option to keep breathing like this, inhaling slowly to full capacity, exhaling slowly to near, near emptiness of the breath. But if you'd like to, and if it feels okay in your body, at the top of your next inhale, hold the breath in for one, two, three, and then slowly exhale. Don't drop the breath, slowly exhale to near completion. Again, there's no hold after exhale. We just move right back into the inhalation. Holding the breath in again. Three, two, one, slowly exhale. And then continue that practice, adding that short three count hold after inhalation. And again, if that makes you feel anxious or agitated, don't do it. Let's continue for just a couple more rounds. Try to stay engaged with the practice as much as you can. Now, as you complete this next full exhalation, Stop the practice and just allow the breath to normalize. However normal feels now. It might want to stay at a greater capacity and that's okay to allow that. And while you're still inward, just notice how you feel. You might feel a bit more awake or at least like stimulated in your nervous system.
When you're ready, bring yourself back to our space together. That's just a taste of the energizing effect of pranayama or breath work. And it sometimes manifests in two ways. One is you might feel a bit more alert or awake right now, kind of like a cup of coffee, if you will. Another way to think about it is you're putting gas into the tank. So you might not feel more awake right now, but you have more energy to get to the end of the day or to the end of whatever process you're in. So it can manifest in either way for you. All right. So we have one more energetic effect to explore with our pranayama practice. So I'm gonna share screen again. Okay. Cool. All right, so the balancing effect. Again, this is kind of a mix of the two that we did before. So we're gonna practice the balanced breath. So we're gonna control the breaths, the length and capacity of the inhale and exhale are equal. And so length just means how what the time you take to inhale and exhale. The capacity means that the amount of breath is the same. So we could take in a lot of breath in a short period of time and we could exhale the same amount of breath in a longer period of time, if you, if you will. So I'll lead you through it. You'll get the hang of it. Now, after we do that and we establish that for a bit, we'll then add what I call the ocean breath or the audible breath. And so for this one, we constrict the glottis or the back of the throat, which is like this kind of this flap that's over your esophagus to make sure that you don't, you know, take water into your lungs when you drink water or, you know, it kind of separates the tubes in your throat basically. But by constricting it slightly, you can make a hissing or ocean type sound as you exhale. So it's kind of like a soft snore. I'm not sure if it picks up on the mic, but it's kind of like Darth Vader. Think about that way. <laughs> um, and you wanna to try to do it as much as you can on exhale. Some people can do this while they inhale, but if you're new to the practice, it can kind of feel straining. So do what you feel like you can do here, all right? So we'll practice the balanced breath, then we'll add the ocean breath and we'll see how we feel afterwards. No expectations. So again, <laughs> sit comfortably, be comfortable. Close the eyes. And as I mentioned before, we start with just breath awareness. It might be the breath in the nostrils, it might be the breath of the throat or the feeling of the lungs expanding and contracting. However best you can notice your breath. And then with your awareness on the breath, we'll begin to even it out or balance it. So again, we wanna make the length of your inhale equal to the length of your exhale. And a way to do that is to count the breath inhaling for a certain number of counts and exhaling for an equal number of counts. And a count is whatever you use for internal measurement. An estimated second, the sound of a syllable or word, just do your best. And for this practice right now, allow the length of your breath to feel manageable or easy. This doesn't have to be a deep breath. It could just be an inhale for one for two or three counts or an exhale for two or three counts. You don't have to push it. Inhaling for a certain number of counts. Exhaling for an equal number of counts. And now that you have the even breath relatively established, keep breathing evenly. And now constrict the glottis or the back of the throat slightly again to make that hissing or ocean or soft snore sound as you breathe. Now, one thing you might notice 
pretty immediately as you start to practice the audible breath or the ocean breath is that it slows down the output of breath. So the number that you're using to count the inhale and exhale might need to be extended here. There might have to be some control on the inhale as well. Try to keep it balanced, but allow there to be that sound, that soft sound with your exhale. Continuing for just a couple more rounds, even audible breathing. And as you complete this next even audible exhale, relax the techniques. Breathing normally, no more counting. And then taking a deeper, fuller breath and bringing your awareness back once again. Now it's hard to maybe qualify in our system what balanced feels like. So some things that you might be feeling is a calm alertness it's not so much calm like you're ready for bed and it's not so much alert like you're ready to you know ready to go you might feel like a steadiness but like an awakeness at the same time so you know again there's no wrong way to feel after doing that but that's just something that you might sense i can share my screen one more time here I'm getting close to the end and so we practiced a calming technique a couple of calming techniques a couple of energizing techniques a couple of balancing techniques I go into great detail <laughs> in my book about all of these techniques and their energetic effects. So feel free to pick that up if you don't win the raffle here. If you want to stay connected with me, there are a few ways to do so. I teach a weekly yoga class online that's available to anyone. And you can check that out at my website, jerrygivens.net. If you wanna work on this one-on-one -on -one with me, <laughs> you can sign up for my coaching. And then again, there are free meditations and breath work techniques that I have available on Insight Timer. And then everything else I do is also on my website. So now we can open it up to questions. I'll go ahead and take down the slides. Um, there are a couple ways you can interact with questions. I know we're at the mark here time-wise, but I'm happy to stay online for a few more minutes. You can type questions into the chat. You could also, um, if it's okay with Brooke, unmute yourself. <laughs> Yes, I think that that's fine now. Blurt it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. Or you can also just reflect in the chat about how you're feeling. Did it work for you? Were you curious about it? Did it feel, how did it go for you? Any reflections are good. There's no wrong way to feel, by the way. <laughs> What is the effect of the ocean breath? Great question. Um, the effect of the ocean breath can actually be two things. The way that we practice it today with the balanced breath gave it a balancing energetic effect. If you were to practice it singularly on its own without making sure the breath is balanced, it actually has, it has a calming, more of a calming effect to it. The um, sound itself, kind of like listening to like a white noise machine or listening to the ocean can actually be quite soothing to the mind. So if you have like your mind kind of in rat race mode or you're in the cycle of thought that's just not helpful for you, it can actually help pull you out of that. So the way that we coupled it today with a balanced breath gave it a balancing energetic effect, but on its own, it can be quite calming. Great question. Um, scrolling up here for questions. Great, I'm glad it was coming, glad you enjoyed it. How can these techniques help with upper thoracic injuries? 
So without knowing the exact injury itself, I can't say too much about how it may help. If it's about kind of building mobility back in that area, the expanded breath like we did today can just help make those muscles a bit more pliable, especially in the upper back, bringing some breath to the back body because it just doesn't expand forward or even just outward. There is some movement of the back body here as well. Um, so I would say it can be helpful. Definitely like talk to your doctor <laughs> about any you know contraindications that it might have, of course. But in theory, I think it can be quite helpful just to making that area more pliable so the breath can get there a bit better. So yeah. Uh, hi, Jennifer. Good to see you. Uh, does consistent practice help with endurance and sports training? Definitely. Definitely it can help with endurance and sports training. Uh, when we, so we, we naturally in our more stressed out states can breathe quite shallowly, which means that we're not getting as much oxygen to our bloodstream. Our heart can't work as efficiently. And just as when we stop breathing, when we have sleep apnea and that causes cardiovascular issues, by training ourselves how to breathe, when you are running, when you are playing that sport, when you are practicing your yoga or whatever it might be that you're doing, you can do so much more efficiently. You just have the energy to get there if that makes sense. Um, you're, you're metabolizing oxygen and exchanging it for carbon dioxide much more efficiently. So that's how that would work. Does that answer your question, Jennifer? Yes, thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. It's good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Jennifer and I go way back. <laughs> great question, great question. Any other questions or reflections? All right. All right, well, I'll turn it back over to Brooke. I'm not sure if you're doing the, the uh, raffle now. Yeah, I think if there's no more questions, we will um, do a quick raffle. Can everybody see the uh, the wheel over here? Good. There we go, lucky winner number one. Robin, I grabbed these from the registrants, so need not be present to win. We're marking these down and we'll go with number two. And again, we're giving the book away. Here. Nice. All right, congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations, everybody who won. And if you didn't, you can definitely pick up the book on anywhere, really. Anywhere, just type it into the internet. You can get it from Target, even. Um, mostly online. You can't go to the store and pick it up. But um, you can also ask your local booksellers if you want to support local bookstores. They can order it for you as well. So many ways to get a hold of it. And you can always keep track, uh, keep in touch with me and Brooke has all of my information as well. Yeah, any last thoughts? You're welcome everybody. It's great to be here with you again and I hope to see you again soon. All right, take care and namaste. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you Jerry. You're so welcome. Thanks Jerry. Yeah, you're so welcome.